let's talk about uses of fame. I'm going to be really quick because I realize I'm running out of time and I want to have a lot of time for discussion. How do people use fame? Um, there are four types of discussions about how fame is deployed that we've come across or that have come up in our discussions. Um, the first are psychic rewards. So uh, I think a lot of a aspiring celebrities uh, think about uh, the, they're young people. They think about esteem, impressing their friends, getting the love of strangers, feeling wanted and things like that. And the micro celebrities who we interview, they, they appreciate, they do feel esteem. They are flattered that people follow them. They are very grateful, but like I said, it, that I don't know. It 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 it's, it feels very much like they are that the investment is lower than you might expect. Uh, they do enjoy fame if it's part of an activity that they enjoy or that's a creative outlet. Uh, and for some people, fame can be a mixed blessing. I had a discussion. First of all, I'm going to talk about it uh, earlier this week. I did a podcast with Carrie Ferris, who's one of sociology's leading sociologists of fame. And she said in her work, you know, a lot of female news anchors, for example, they get harassed. They don't like it. They don't have people come up to them at dinner, you know, when they're at a restaurant to interrupt and it's unpleasant or it makes you feel unsafe. And so, Renown can be a mixed blessing. And for some people, it's just like it's a fact of life that they have to deal with, given the type of work they do. They're in a communication centric line of work. And this is like the price you have to pay. It's not unlike, for example, what a professor might feel like if somebody interrupts their dinner, you know, in the cafeteria while they're having friends, if they were to get a steady stream of that. You're grateful, you're accessible, you know, but it can be too much. There, there are instances where it can be too much and even threatening. The second reason is money. And my sense is that fame is not easy to monetize. Monetize is the word that they use, converting fame into money. And it's really quite difficult. And even people who are uh, quite famous, they generally they've reported, you know, modest, modest incomes a lot of them have a lot of people who i thought were quite famous had day jobs um or they had other sources of income fame in and of itself even when you're well known uh might not uh lend itself to making much money unless you're extremely famous and often it's a subordinate uh motive anyways like we i i think there are many creators they know how they could become more popular uh, there are ways that you could easily create uh, an enterprise that is more popular by doing something controversial or taking up topics that are, you know, taboo or whatever. But like people don't want to uh, because fame is often not the main goal. What is valuable to a lot of our respondents is status and group membership. Uh, there are some creators who are a lot like academics. You know how academics, they love sociology. They want to build sociology. They want to meet other sociologists. They want to become respected in the field of sociology. So that those type of dynamics occur in a lot of areas of interest, from comic books to like vacation, theme park, you know, timeshare, whatnot. Like there's all sorts. And... We've run into creators who look a lot like professors on, you know, esoteric subjects that don't fit neatly into, uh, into uh, you know, an academic discipline. But they're still very serious about it, and a lot of those dynamics exist. The last thing that celebrity is uh, thought to be useful for is influence. And um, celebrity can give you the power of exposure. It gives you the power to deliver a message to someone. But research into celebrity endorsers shows that it's more complicated than that. Audiences evaluate celebrities as if they were, like they do other people in their lives. They evaluate how much they trust a celebrity, how competent they think a celebrity is to comment or make an appraisal of an object that they're speaking about. And they'll listen to them as they would any other person in their life. So, for example, if Tom Hanks says, you know, go get your COVID vaccine, there are people who 
might reject, you know, not everybody will listen to Tom Hanks, even if they like him. They might say, well, Tom Hanks has different politics from me, or Tom Hanks is not a medical professional. So people are thoughtful in how they evaluate, uh, uh, how they evaluate uh, the influence of celebrities. 